We most certainly are, and I am most certainly him. Welcome along to Esports Live, our second show of this second series, if you're listen, listening on BFBS. I uh, thank you to Amy, wonderful Amy, who I have to apologise to, because I told her that I was going to be live on her show at a certain time, and she messaged me, and I was still riding in, because I was running late, for all those chaotic reasons as before. One of them being, which I didn't tell her, was the fact I was actually getting a few cheeky computer games in. A couple of drops on Apex before I came in. And I think if you're going to be late for an esports show, playing computer games is possibly an okay excuse. Anyway, uh, if you're listening to us on BFBS, hello, I'm in your ears. I might be in your face as well as we're streaming live across Twitch. You can find us at This Is BFBS, Facebook, BFBS Radio, and YouTube at BFBS Creative. Find us on all those platforms. Uh, what is on the show on this second one? Uh, tonight's show, uh, we're going to be chatting to Corporal Jack Jones, who competes with the Re Me Cod team. Originally, I called it the RE Me Team, which is me being an idiot, but there we go. Uh, he's got all the information about the upcoming tri service tournament. Uh, we might be speaking to another special guest who, I was just checking my phone to see if he'd got in touch, we may have on before we get to the end, but that is still a work in progress. We like to keep things fluid here on the show. Uh, we'll also be playing your music as always, so let's do that. This on BFBS, on Esports Live, this is the Caesars, and jerk it out. Uh, so then, thank you very much. Are we now live on the stream? Are we good? Trey Stoyd. I'm sending him a Oh, right, Wiki's going to do it. Amazing. Um, so he's cool, so we'll just do one link with Jack. The Caesars and Jerk It Out. Still not totally sure what that song is about. Someday, someone will tell me, I will guess. Uh, this is BFBS Esports Live. Thank you very much for listening or watching. If you are watching, by the way, while the songs are on, we will be having little bits of content as well. We've got a quiz on the way uh, with some of the hardest esports questions I've ever seen. I've just been through them, and I think I'll get one right. So that's a challenge for you. Uh, but let us meet our first guest of the evening. It is Corporal Jack Jones. Jack, how are you, buddy? How's it going, yeah? <laughs> there we go. Did I take you by surprise there? Yeah, I had to unmute myself. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, listen, thank you very much for joining us. Where are you in the world right now? I'm um, in Tidworth at the moment. 
Uh, do you know what? My my geography is terrible. Tidworth, let me have a guess. Is it close to? Actually, I've got no idea. Where's Tidworth? Uh, it's Wiltshire, so it's it's just off the uh, Salisbury Plain next to Stonehenge. Sounds beautiful. Uh, so talk to me then about Reme, which I called R E M E early on, which is me being stupid. What is it you do in the forces? What is that role? Uh, we're engineers, so not as in the Royal Engineers, we're mechanics, electricians, as in vehicle technicians uh, and electricians. Um, basically, anywhere there's vehicles, there'll be Remy there to fix them uh, and maintain. I guess the important question, this being an eSports show, is if I needed someone to build me a gaming computer, could you do it? Me personally, probably not, to be fair. Um, I'm, a, I'm a VM, so I'm, I'm, my electrics is limited, but techs, uh, electricians, electrician technicians are normally our, uh, our, our geeks that do all of our computers and that. Yeah, do you know, I, do you, it's one of those things I wish I'd studied more, because every time something breaks, I think, ah, oh, if only I knew I could fix this. Uh, so, let's talk about the important game that's coming up on Thursday. Is this the Tri-Service COD tournament, or is that what's happening next month? What's coming up for you next Thursday? So, Thursday coming is our, is our first game of the league, which runs all, all of the year. Um, and it's essentially, if anyone knows the CD, you know, which is the Call of Duty League, it's a, it's a replica of that. We copy their format, uh, and we just input our different cores into it and, and do the same tournament. So our first game's on Thursday, uh, and then the first game of the whole league got played yesterday. And who won? I'm not actually sure, to be honest with you. Um, I, I didn't um, sit into the, to the army Twitch, but... Uh, same sure question. So, so it's just an army, it's an army league that's running? So... It is an army league and it's run by the army, but the Royal Navy do um, have a team in, and we've also got a charity team in, which is uh, ex, uh, ex service members, so veterans uh, that are involved as well. So it's not just army; it's just we, we're running it at the moment. So for people who maybe play Call of Duty or have played Call of Duty or no Call of Duty, what sort of modes are you playing within Call of Duty? Is it Warzone or is it the different modes that we're playing the COD League, the big COD League? Yeah, so you, yeah, so you only play multiplayer. Um, and you, you'll play a best of five um, on most of the games until you hit champs, um, where it will be hard point followed by search and destroy, and then control. And then if the if the victory hasn't been decided, then uh, you'll move to another hard point and then end on a search and destroy. With these modes, I mean, a lot of people, I guess, will have played the played death matches when it comes to Call of Duty. How is it? How is it playing these different modes, especially under the pressure of playing league play? It gets surprisingly competitive, um, considering that you know there's not really any pride apart from pride at the end of it. Um, yeah, like last year especially with uh, with Vanguard well, was a really, really competitive season. Most of the teams uh, in the league were of, of a really similar skill level, so um, it does get quite heated and it can get quite passionate. Yeah, I, I mentioned it before as well that next next month is the Tri Service COD tournament. I'm guessing the Tri Service COD tournament is teams from the Navy, it is teams from the RAF, and teams from the Army. If so, what are we expecting from that tournament? So, um, from the brief message that's been spread out already, um, each each core that already competes within the Army team, uh, the Army League, uh, have been told to try and muster up three teams if they can. Um, so they're going to try and get three teams from each core and then it will be three categories and uh, as you say will be the Navy will be doing the same and the RF will be doing the same and it will be a competition to see who wins How fierce is the competition when it comes to it? How fierce is the competition for places on these teams? The A teams is really fierce um, there's, there's quite a large skill gap bet- uh, between people on the A teams and B teams uh, especially any your professionals where you've got people who essentially could be playing um, semi-professional Call of Duty, it just in general, and then people who just sort of play it for fun and just happen to be quite good at it. But yeah, it is yeah. quite hard to get on a team. It's one of those games that I have played, as I said. I've played it for years. I've played it since the early Call of Duties, and I still don't think I'm any good at it. What was your? What is the best Call of Duty you've played out of the many that have been that have been released? Modern Warfare 3 was probably definitely my favourite, I'd say. Well, yeah, that's an interesting one. Why, why Modern Warfare 3? What was so good about that? Uh, I think, so I started on the original COD 4, um, but I, d- I do think that MW3 was just the nostalgia point um, where all your friends play it, because it's, it's a community sport uh, game, isn't it? So 
all my friends sort of picked up Modern Warfare 3 and we all played it together and that's what probably made it my favourite. Yeah. And what is it like? Obviously, you're in the army, you're on base a lot of the time. What, is, what does esports do for you? So, to be honest, we do all of our esports in our own time, so it does take up a good portion. Um, but it's, it's just the competition. It, it normally, it started during COVID, really, where we didn't have a lot to do. Um, and obviously, a lot of us have played team sports before, rugby, football, and during COVID it wasn't possible, but esports was still a, a way to keep being competitive. Um, and so I just enjoy that aspect of it mainly. And obviously, it's a game, so you still do enjoy just meeting new people and having fun on it. I love, I love the competition. Uh, Jack Jones, thank you so much. Cheers for your time, buddy. No, no problem. Thank you very much. Thank you. There you go. Corporal Jack Jones there telling me all about the Trans Service Cop tournament, which we'll stay in touch with, actually. We'll see what happens uh, when it kicks off next month, and we'll find out what happened with the big game that's coming up next Thursday. Uh, I'm going to play you this from Supergrass. Then, the guest that I mentioned, a man from the world of Counter-Strike, we shall chat to him after this. All good? Super grass and all right here on BFBS. This is eSports Live. Uh, and it's been a very last-minute booking, this has, uh, because he was in rehearsal just a couple of minutes ago, and he answered the phone to me while still in rehearsal. And I'm watching the picture from his phone right now as he bowls round a studio. I believe he's in Katowice right now. It is Stunner. Buddy, how are you? I'm doing well, OJ. Uh, it's always plenty to hear your voice. Yes, we are in Katowice, Poland. We are getting geared up for what is the Intel X3 Masters. Um, there's a lot going on here, man. You've been here. You know the routine. You know the drill. Uh, you know, for some teams, this is this is it. You know, this is their championship, their Super Bowl. It is. It's one of the biggest esports events in the world for the world of Counter Strikes. And you say, I know it. I am actually going to be there in two weeks' time. I'll yes. be seeing you, which I'm very <laughs> much looking forward to seeing your face. It's been a while. Uh, for people maybe listening right now who don't know how big this tournament is, 
What is the IEM, the Intel Extreme Masters Katowice? Who's playing? Who's going to win? And why is it such an important tournament when it comes to Counter-Strike? So when it comes down to a couple of events in the Counter-Strike circuit over the course of the year, there are a few that stick out. There are a few that are going to be your championship uh, S-tier level events. Katowice falls into that. Uh, there are teams that have been trying to get a spot here for well over a year now. Some definitely succeeded and others went back to the drawing board, never to be seen again. Uh, in regards to coming down here, there's several favorites. And since it's the new year, you know, we were down in Rio before this. Uh, so, so now we get to see what everyone did in their off time, which should be great. Which should be fascinating as well. And the stadium it takes place in is called the Spodek, which I th I've never totally worked it out. I think the translation from Polish to English. Is it spaceship? Is that right? No, no. But I'll help you, though. Okay. Uh, so we'll, we'll translate from, from uh, Polish to American Southern English <laughs> to British English, <laughs> and we will get there eventually. Uh, I think it translates to saucer. Oh, oh, you were close. You were real close. Listen, that makes sense, right? Flying saucer. It looks like a big concrete spaceship in the middle. And the amount of people who go down, the fans yeah. are wild. If you've ever been to a football match, you'll know the sort of the sound. And it's tens of thousands of people packing into the stadium and a big expo outside. Yeah. And we're expecting it to be the same again this year. And, you know, OJ, I think that's where, you know, some people, they'll, they'll watch and they'll be like, well, what do you mean? People are watching other people play video games. But the truth is... You know, you get into those arenas, you get into hearing the, the crowd chants and the vibe, and it has every making of every quote-unquote traditional sport that you've ever seen on television. So, you know, just as people will make the argument, oh, that's that's lame, you're watching people play video games. Well, whose dad's watching football, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's the, it's like the same thing. Nonetheless, uh, yes, it's an exciting time. Esports is, is, you know, it's growing. Uh, and for our little sector of the world, we've been here for several times in a row. Uh, to kind of beat to that is, hell, we were here, uh, you know, when the pandemic started, OJ, you remember that. I was there. And up until now. The day yeah. they locked it down and said no one can turn up, it was it was an odd time, but esports has gone through it all. Um, one thing, obviously, about this show is talking about people who are in the forces in the UK, and esports has okay. become part of their lives. It's how they, how they stay in touch with friends and family. It's how they keep in touch with other people they serve with. You were American military. Was esports, I mean, this is a few years ago now, where was esports at when you were serving? Oh, man. So when I was in the Army, I was in there from 2010, 2013. I was an infantryman. I did a combat tour in Afghanistan, and I got out in 2013. So, you know, just prior to when, say, this little company called Amazon bought this other little company called Twitch, and then everything kind of fell into to place to what you see today. Uh, but, yeah, I, I did a combat tour in Afghanistan. I was in the infantry. Um, it's it's a different walk of life, I'll tell you that, to say the least. Um but, you know, people are people, and you just keep that, keep that front and center, and you're good to go. Because 10 years later on, obviously, the Internet's bigger. People who are now on bases can yeah. keep in touch through, through Twitch and through eSports, which I guess probably wasn't happening at the time. Would it have made your time serving, would it have been more enjoyable? Would it have been better knowing you, could, you can keep in touch with friends back home if there was that ability to do that? Yeah, you know, I think that would have made life a lot better. Uh, I would put that up there with, like, constant air conditioning. You know, just certain things that, you know, the basic human needs to survive. Video games and air conditioning. Not water, not food. That's all overrated, OJ. <laughs> um, do you still have friends who serve? I mean, what is it like? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm talking to people who are in the British Army, the Navy, the Air Force. Obviously, they're talking about having the ability to play now on base. What is it like within the American forces? Um, so, I mean, if, if you're stateside, you know, you're stationed stateside, you basically have like a, what you'd be, a, a university dorm almost, right? So, uh, but when you're overseas, it's a totally different ballgame. We're talking about like sand and dirtiness. But again, OJ, individual experiences vary. So not everybody has the same deployment experience. Some people are in there. I had a friend who was deployed to Kuwait, for example, and believe it or not, they're not doing much in Kuwait. Just not really, I guess it's not, you know, vacation time or whatever. So he played a lot of World of Warcraft. As inversely to my deployment, there was no, there was none of that. <laughs> it just wasn't going to be. Yeah. So, you know, it, it is good though. I, I'll say, OJ, just on that note, like I've had friends that I've made through Counter Strike at a young age, uh, where they were, you know, they were homeschooled. I went to public school, and it turns out that, oh, a small town in Alabama, you wouldn't know it. Well, it's the same town. We live roughly five minutes from each other, and I never would have met these guys, and we've been best friends ever since. You know, video games transcend a lot of different things. Um, so if you can grab that, hell yeah. Absolutely. Uh, for people who are listening right now who want to know who's going to win IEM Katowice, go on. Mm. In your words, who's winning it? Put oh, it on the line for me. Come on. Is it Faye? Are ah. they going to do it? Are they going to win the Intel Grand Slam? 
Yeah, well, you know, OJ, that would that would be a, a great, you know, sort of end to the story here for Katowice this year. I think a lot of people wanted them to do it in Rio. I I would like to think that they're going to find their way back to at least top four. But, you know, time will tell. I, I have a lot of stock on phase. I really want to see the North American teams actually do something. So that's a whole different ball game. But, yeah, I'm looking at your phases of the world. I think, uh, you know, they got a pretty good shot if they come prepared. Well, thank you very much for your time. Did I really interrupt your rehearsal? No, it's okay. Uh, don't worry. You know, you know the saying, it's like, work smarter, not harder. So I was going to bring you on board. So Cheers. I appreciate you having me, OJ. This has been terrifying, but we did it. Stunner, as always, a pleasure. I'll see you soon. <laughs> see you over in Poland, buddy. See ya. Cheers. There you go. There goes Stunner. Uh, there is a big Count Strike tournament. If you don't know about IEM Katowice, we will be doing something on it over the coming weeks. And I will be there. So I'll be looking for some more interviews coming back from that. Let's play more music now on BFBS. This is Hard Five and Living for the Weekend. I was just worried they were going to fade the microphone up then. Because I'm not in control of the microphones here in the studio, which is uh, different to how I normally do radio shows. But, yeah, I was giving it a bit of singing to that. Living for the weekend by Hard Fire here on BFBS. This is eSports Live. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for watching as well. If you've wanted to, to watch this, you can do. There's loads of different ways to watch it now. Uh, you can watch us on Facebook, which is BFBS Radio. You can find us on YouTube at BFBS Creative. This is BFBS if you want to find us via Twitch. And just say thank you again. Uh, to uh, Stunner, my man Stunner, who's out in Katowice, uh, because I did call him whilst he was in a rehearsal, and he very kindly came away from the rehearsal to talk to us about the tournament, which is massive. If you've never seen a big Counter-Strike tournament, the, like, the big tournaments in the world, it is, 
it's amazing, it's febrile, it's exciting, and I think Counter-Strike, different maybe to Call of Duty, um, is very simple. It's a game, you know, I'm going to say this, possibly a little bit like baseball. You throw the ball, you hit the ball out, you get a run, but there's so much more under the surface, but the headline is very simple. You beat the other team. Well worth watching. We'll talk more about it over the coming weeks. Now, we have this amazing quiz that we put together, which I think is one of the hardest quizzes I have ever seen. I've never seen a quiz as hard as this, so I'm going to choose one question from it to tell you, um, because I don't think I would have got any of these but oh, I've just realised I would have got it wrong as well. Uh, so we'll go for this question. Um, what year was the fire, first ever esports tournament held? What year was the first ever esports tournament held? If you think you know, hit us up in one of those ways because it's one of those questions where you either know it or you don't. Extra points if you can tell me what the uh, event was and where it was. Ed Sheeran, bad habits here on BFBS, and that is it. Thank you so much to our guests, who were Corporal Jack Jones and to Stunner as well. Um, the answer to the question, what was the first country to recognise esports as a real sport? Uh, I thought it would be South Korea. It's not. It was China in 2003. The rest of the questions are wild, um, of which we'll do next week. Which, where we'll be back? Uh, back next Tuesday. Um, we'll be back at 6.30 usual time. If you missed Esports Live, you can catch up again by going to bfbs.com forward slash Esports Live. And hear it again on Sunday afternoon, 12.30 UK time. We'll see you next week, Tuesday at 6.30.
quiz. Eh, 